The renowned British Museum, one of the truly great museums of the world, has struck oil, I suppose, with a £50 million deal with the multinational company British Petroleum. The new funding is part of a 10-year deal which will be utilised to transform the museum, preserving the institution for generations to come. This is about 5% of the funding the British Museum needs to fulfil its overall refurbishment plans, including a new energy centre and an archaeological research centre. A poll commissioned by the British Museum revealed 59% of the public prefer museums receiving donations over using taxpayers' money. So this must be good news. But publication of the deal saw the resignation of the Deputy Chairman of the Museum, Muriel Gray, being announced, while another trustee, Dame Mary Beard, has also come out against this particular sponsorship. Well, I'm joined now by the Just Stop Oil spokesman, Dr Kushnaker. Thank you very much for coming in, joining us again. Thank you. Um, after a lot of protests and blocking roads and things, you must feel this has been a failure with the British Museum now not stopping oil but encouraging oil. Well, I think it doesn't come as a surprise that yet another British institution is taking money from a big oil company. This comes off the back of British Cycling being sponsored by Shell, as well as the Science Museum taking money from Adani, a huge coal manufacturer. Um, but I am disappointed and frankly disgusted by it. Um, the reason being that this is yet another example of greenwashing. It's a company who is trying to attach its reputation to a cultural institution to try and somehow improve its reputation. But isn't it just British Petroleum is giving money back to the community? It makes profits and it's effectively paying a bit more in tax by supporting the British Museum, profitable companies for carrying out a community role. No, I'm afraid what British Petroleum is, is the modern face of colonialism. What it does is it extracts wealth from black and brown communities around the world and it takes profit from them and uses it to fund millionaires in Mayfair, which is what Bernard Looney, the CEO of BP, is. And it also funnels that money in towards regimes such as Azerbaijan, as well as Israel, where they have recently been granted new gas licenses to drill but, but off actually, the coast of Gaza and to fund a war that is frankly a, a genocide. A, a lot of these countries make a lot of money from the oil that they're getting are very dependent on it, some very poor countries, and this helps raise the standard of living of people in those countries. That's not a bad thing. British Petroleum is a, is a functionary in this context. Well, so, exactly, so in Azerbaijan, BP is the biggest source of foreign direct investment. Well, that's great. And that has funded that the militarisation of no, the Azerbaijani no, but, but, state. And since September of this year, 100,000 people have become refugees, ethnic Armenians, who, where he, ethnic cleansing was taking but place. But this isn't the fault and of British Petroleum. To, BP can't determine the governments of countries, but money that goes into those countries helps raise the standard of living of people. BP can determine where it chooses to take its business, and not, it is not continuing... Not really. It has to get oil from all over the world. It, well, first of all, it doesn't have to get oil because we don't need oil. We, don't need, you know new, we, need we oil. don't need new so oil and we, gas. What are we going to do with that oil? I mean, how are we going to have the lights on in here? Well, so at the moment, we have got reserves of oil and gas that we can rely on whilst we uh, use a fast as possible transition towards renewables. That's wind, that's solar, that's hydropower, that's tidal power. What, what, what did we do earlier in this month when it was cold for a couple of days and the wind was not blowing? Well, I'm we not saying we're the there now, but what I'm well, saying said, is that we don't need, we didn't need new any more oil and gas. We, we, we do, because if you noticed, the oil price went up and the gas price particularly went up last year because we hadn't invested in getting new supplies and we'd become dependent on one supplier for a lot of Europe, and that had a profound effect on people's livelihoods and on business. So not to have new and varied supplies is deeply irresponsible. Jacob, the International Energy Agency, the world's authority on how energy flows around and what is needed, are saying that we do not need new oil and gas. You are saying that we do, but what I would propose is that that's probably because you are incentivised to peddle the line of the oil and gas industry, given the fact that the Tory party received three and a half million pounds from polluting industries last year. I'm not incentivised to do this at all. I haven't received any money directly from the oil and gas industry. I have no You may not have directly received that money. Than, I want my constituents not to be cold and poor, and you want to make my constituents so cold and poor. I work I as a doctor in the NHS. In Bristol, I believe. No, in London. Oh, sorry, I thought you were sorry, <laughs> in Bristol, sorry. Um, but, so, I have my patients' uh, concern, first and foremost. I work in infectious diseases. Have you heard of dengue? 
I've heard so of dengue, dengue fever, is, yes. Dengue is a deadly viral infection that has increased the number of cases that we're seeing worldwide every single decade since 1990. So for the last three decades, it's doubled every year. That is people dying from this but malaria, as a direct malaria result malaria increased of... when we stopped using DDT, didn't it? Yeah, we but... stopped using it because it was dangerous, <laughs> yeah. and yet the disease increased. So there are ways of stopping disease that we don't think are sensible. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that both malaria as well as dengue, the, the patterns of those diseases are spreading because of the impact of but the you, climate change. But you also know even the IPCC admits that more people die each year from cold than from heat. But as the world gets hotter, that doesn't mean that fewer people will die. That will mean more people will die. If you look at well, the IPCC report... Well, but currently more people that, die from cold, so if they're yeah. less cold, they will have a better chance of surviving the winter. No, but that increasing, must increasing global temperatures will not bring down the number of deaths overall. Well, that's not the situation that at the is. moment. The situation at the moment uh, is that increasing temperatures have reduced the deaths from cold. And that but, helps But people. has increased the number of deaths from heat by but, a greater but they're number. Lower. No, they're it, lower than the deaths The number from of cold. deaths going up from so extreme heat... So having a slightly hotter climate is actually going to reduce the deaths from temperature. No, but you're the, missing the point. But we need, Whilst these, I agree we need that these fossil people... fuels anyway, and we want to have them as cheaply as possible. We don't what need you them want, anyway. We do, because we've already established no, we wouldn't have the, the lights the on. World's, the world's leading scientists and energy experts are saying that we do not need more fossil fuels. The only people who are saying that we need more fossil fuels are the people, are people who profit who, who are from extracting that, who those Who are democratically fuels. elected and represent real voters who want to be able to heat their homes. Who are, That's the point, and keep who prices down. Who are elected down. off of the back of donations from fossil fuel companies. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for coming in. Unfortunately, we could go on all night, but thank you very much, Kush. Coming up, inflation, talking about inflation, is down. Down, but interest rates remained high. Is it time for the Bank of England ostriches to get their act together? Plus, civil servants could be set to destroy historic records owing to what has been called 